Today I'll solve the 14th challenge on Ethernet called Gatekeeper 2. Scroll down. The goal of this challenge is to register as an entrant to pass this level. Scroll down further, and I'll copy this code over to my code editor, and then also deploy the contract. Confirm the transaction to deploy this challenge. Inside my code editor, I copy the challenge over from Ethernet. Again, the goal of this challenge is to register as an entrant to pass this level. What we need to do is set the state variable entrant to our account. So how do we set this? I've clicked on it and highlighted, so let's scroll down and see where this is updated. Scroll down, and the only place I see the state variable entrant being updated is when we call the function enter. It takes in some input, and it looks like we'll need to pass three modifiers, gate 1, gate 2, and gate 3. Let's take a look at gate 1 first. Gate 1 is message.sender not equal to tx.origin. We already saw this that we can bypass this modifier in gatekeeper1 if we call this function from a contract. So what we'll do is call the function enter through our contract and message.sender will not be equal to tx.origin. Let's take a look at gate2. Gate2 is saying that the code size of the caller must be equal to 0. So it looks like it's saying that the caller message.sender cannot be a contract. However, when you deploy a contract, the code size of that contract is still equal to zero. So we'll be able to bypass this modifier if we call the function enter from a constructor of a contract. And gate three looks a little bit more complex. So I'll explain how to bypass this modifier once we pass gate one and then gate two. So let's write the contract. Contract hack. To bypass the first modifier, we'll need to call the function enter from a contract. So we're gonna be calling the function on the contract tag. Constructor, and then we're going to be calling the gatekeeper2. So I'll type gatekeeper2 and then I'll name it target. And then to bypass gate1, we'll call target.enter. Let's scroll down and see how we're supposed to call the function enter. Enter takes in an input of bytes8 and then returns true if we are successfully able to call this function. So for now, I'll say the input that we're going to have to pass bytes 8. For now, I name it key and then pass it here. If we are successful, it will return true. So we'll do a quick check, make sure that enter returns true. Else, we'll say failed. Okay, to pass gate 2, the code size of the caller must be equal to 0. This means that the code size of this hack contract must be equal to 0. However, when the contract is being deployed, so any code inside here, while any code inside here is executing, the code size of this contract will be equal to zero. So you'll be able to pass this modifier. Okay, the last modifier is gate three. I'll copy it and then paste it here. Let's break down how to bypass this condition. So I'll say uint 64s is equal to the first part before the inclusive or operator. We compute s and then take xor with the gate key. This will be the input that we pass in. So I'll rename it as key. And this must be equal to max uint 64. So this will be a sequence of 64 ones. Okay, to solve this part, I'll do some math. So I'll put some comments here. You'll say that max is equal to the max of uint 64. So this will be all ones 64 times. And then we have our variable s, that is this number over here, s. And the condition is that s xor key must be equal to max. To understand how to meet this condition, let's do a quick review of XOR. So let's say that I have A equals a sequence of bits 1, 0, 1, 0. And then I have another sequence of bits. Let's say this is equal to 1, 1, 0, 0. So what is the XOR of A, XOR, B? XOR returns a 1 only if one of them is equal to a 1. So if you have a 1, 1 or a 0, 0, XOR will return 0. So for the first position, we have a 1, 1. So this will return 0. The next one, we have a 0, 1. So this will return 1. 0, 1 again. So that will be a 1. And then 0, 0. So that will be a 0. So that is A, X, or B. The other fact that you'll need to know to solve this condition is the following rule. If you take A and then X or it with another A and then X or it with B, this will be simply be equal to B. Let's see why this is. So I said a is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0. And then I'll copy the same statement again. And what is a, x, or a? In all of the position, the bits are the same. 
We have a 1 and then a 1, so that will be a 0. A 0 and a 0, so that will be a 0. 1 and a 1 again, so that will be a 0. And then lastly, 0, 0, so we have a 0. So a x or a is equal to 0. So going back to this, what we're doing here is 0 x or b. 0 x or b will be simply b equal to b. So once we know this fact, we can find the key that satisfies this condition. Notice that if we take s x or s and then take another x or a key, this will be simply b equal to key. What we're doing here is applying this logic over here. On the other hand, we know that this part is equal to max, and then we're applying another XOR with S, so this will be equal to S XOR max. And there we have it. We found out that the key must be equal to S XOR max. So let's write this in code. S will have to be the UN64 of some Ketchak256 of message.sender. Message.sender will be this contract, so that will be address this. And then what we're going to do next is find the uint64 of this part. So that will be uint64, I'll name it k, this will be equal to s xor type uint64 dot max. And then lastly, we'll need to turn this into bytes. So I'll remove this, and then I'll move this code over to the bottom. And then say bytes8 key is equal to cast the variable k to bytes Eight by typing bytes 8 parentheses k. Okay, so that should bypass gate 3. So let's now deploy this contract. Inside Dethana, I'll get the address of the challenge by typing F12 and then looking for instant address. Copy this. And then inside Remix, I copied over the address of the contract and then also the code that we wrote in our code editor. So let's now deploy the contract tag. Click on the deployment tab, make sure that we're connected to testnet, and then select the hack contract. Copy the address of the target contract, paste it here, and then call deploy. And then confirm the transaction. Okay, the transaction was successful, so we were able to successfully deploy the hack contract. The last step to complete this challenge is to submit the instance. Okay, once you beat the challenge, you'll see the button change to go to next level. See you in the next level.